Um, my name is Brett Burry. Uh, we're going to do a presentation uh, today on WordPress. This is actually uh, kind of part of a presentation we've done in Entrepreneur Week. But what I found was that people wanted something that was just uh, at a much uh, you know, more beginner level than what we had presented at, at uh, Global Entrepreneur Week. So uh, Tyler and our Travis and I uh, spoke, and we thought, well, we'll just kind of all those questions we couldn't get to, we'll put in this step by step. So what I'm going to do here today is that if you were to do a I'm, how many of you have actually used WordPress before and have an installation? So it's a, it's a, it's a good portion uh, of, of you guys. But we're going to step through how I might set up a, an initial site. It's a very beginner level. So you, the people who have already done it before may learn just a few things. If you've never done it before, this will be a, a, a lot of new stuff. So I'm just going to start uh, and, and uh, with a very clean install of WordPress and then go from there. And I've got kind of a checklist that we're going to go through all these things. But it's the theme selection and installation is the first thing we're going to talk about. Then we're going to upload some media. We're going to install some plugins. We're going to uh, uh, we're going to create a custom menu. We're going to set up a few widgets, and we're going to create a blog post and a, a page. And uh, we're going to walk through the elements of a post, and then discuss the WordPress taxonomy, which is tags and uh, categories. And then uh, I'll take uh, uh, some questions if you guys have those. You can write them down and, uh, and, and have them ready to go, and then I'll, I'll read through those. And if something's not clear you know, during the presentation, you want me to slow down, just, uh, just shout, okay? Thanks. Uh, so what this is, is this is a, a clean install of WordPress. This is what it looks like. And we're going to call, toggle back and forth between two screens. But primarily, this session is about the back end of, uh, of WordPress. And Sorry for a second. I, when I switched screens, it reduced everything on the size of my screen to where I can't read it. So I'm going to uh, uh, move this uh, screen around. So. We're going to go to the dashboard. So regardless of who you have install your website or who your hosting service is, they might have different menu configurations. Right now, this site that I put up for the purposes of this demo is on WP Engine. Uh, it's a, a hosting platform uh, for WordPress websites. But this is just the, the clean dashboard. This is a brand new installation of WordPress. This is what it looks like. And we're going to kind of walk through these menu steps uh, to, to see what, uh, what what's in there. Um, the first thing is, uh, if we want to pick a theme for this, this is the default theme, and that's actually what we're going to select, but I thought I'd show you some tips on how to select other themes as well. So, uh, are any of you guys using custom themes or premium themes, or the things that you paid for? There's one person in there and another person. So, uh, the way this works is that, that um, I'm in this interface, I see the standard theme that WordPress comes with, which is actually, you can really tweak it to make it you know, a great looking theme, and I'm going to click on themes. And so it gives me the default ones, and WordPress, the way they, they, they run their themes is it's 2017, it's 2015, it's 2016, and then so on down the line is, is you know, for their different default themes. So let's just say we don't want to use any of these, or we want to take a look and see what are our options for maybe picking something else to make our, our site look like. So what I do is I would uh, click right here, and I want to add a new theme to my, to my blog. Uh, or to, yeah, to my blog. So I'm going to click on add a new theme. And what happens is you're still inside of this, our shell, we're still inside of our installation, but you're having delivered to you all of these options that you can pick uh, for, for installing a theme in your system. These are kind of slow to, to redraw. Uh, so you can look at the featured themes, you can look at popular themes, latest, favorites. Uh, you can actually filter themes. So let's say that you wanted uh, to only look at e-commerce themes, or you're going to do a blog about entertainment. Uh, you could kind of filter those thousands and thousands of results down to uh, to what you wanted to. My recommendation is that you actually probably just only use something that's on the popular list. And this is this is the reason being: a lot of these things are free, and you know, it could be you know a wonderful theme. But if somebody somewhere else in the world who contributed this theme uh, decides to get a new job or no longer supports it or does something else. Else, you, you may have something that's kind of a, uh, nobody's 
developing that. But if you get a theme that's really popular and somebody's making some money on it, then you can you, you can assume that they will actually put the effort in to, to keep it up and running. So I, sometimes I run into people who pick some theme that looked beautiful uh, and it just gets abandoned and then you're kind of stuck. You can always switch themes, but I just make a recommendation to spend a little bit of money or pick something that's really popular or just use one of the default WordPress themes that are in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you how to uh, you know, take a look at one of these themes and we're going to just type in 20 in the search and then that'll kind of filter down just because I know how WordPress sites are named into a, a prior uh, WordPress installations. So I don't think we have 2014, uh, we, don't, we didn't have 2012 in our system. So I'm going to click on this 2012 and I'm going to check it out and see what it looks like. And so this is kind of a really good way to uh, see a whole bunch of themes, but honestly WordPress's delivery of the content doesn't do them a, a really good presentation of, of, of what they look like. This theme's not too appealing when you look at it with this, the default content. So what I'm going to tell you is we're going to install this theme and I'm going to show you a couple other places to go and get ideas about what a theme might really look like. I mean, if I were to see this, I wouldn't say, you know, I'm sold. This is the theme for my blog that I want. It looks pretty, <laughs> pretty plain. And, and, but if you see some examples of this uh, populated with content and configured, it, it's much more appealing. So what I'm going to do is we're going to actually install this one. We're not going to develop in this one. I want to just show you, um, you know, what it looks like. And this little thing right here, I always like to see some stars and some content. So it makes me think people are commenting on it. Uh, you can kind of get an idea that it's it's a living theme. Some of them have, you know, they might be in there, the list, but there are no comments on them. You know, it's no one is actually using it is the inference and I'm always kind of a little wary even though it seems this is perfect for what I'm, I'm thinking of, of using I just don't do that because I think it's too risky so I'm gonna click install okay and so where we were we were back at the dashboard I'm just gonna retrace my steps I went to themes I uh, went to the themes here this connection is actually really slow uh, today, so we're going we're gonna to pretend that loads this page, and we're going to pretend we search for 20, and this is my choice, and I'm going to click install. Let me, well, this is waiting. I didn't expect to have internet technical difficulties. Uh, but let me show you a couple of little we'll cut to the uh, to the keynote. Uh, and uh, well, that's happening. So uh, these are some URLs that I want to just, just I'm going to click through these real quick. I wasn't expecting this to take so long to upload my my live demo. These are some good sources for themes that you can you can find. There we go. Uh, there's a place called Theme Forest. Uh, it's a it's an internet marketplace for digital products. You can buy uh, Photoshop uh, templates. You can buy WordPress templates. You can buy little bits of software graphics. Uh, but if you go to Theme Forest, I believe it's .net. There's tons of things to buy, and you can uh, use those uh, to, to look at the previews. That's also a lot where a lot of premium themes are, and so you can see what someone who's actually making a living making WordPress themes, and they have much better uh, 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 look of, uh, of themes, meaning that they're populated, they're trying to make some money, so instead of just having the little boat, the rowboat there, they have lots of content. So it looks like this thing is, is actually uploaded now. I'm going to click on Activate. Okay, so now what you see, this is we're back to our uh, this screen we had before. We had uh, 2012, 2015, 2017, and 2016. So I've installed the new WordPress theme. I haven't customized it yet. I haven't done anything, but I'm going to re redraw our uh, our blog here, our sample blog. 
And now we see that my new theme in here is, is installed in a different browser window, and this is what you know, that, that new theme default looks like. Just to show you, sometimes you can toggle back and forth between themes. I can click on 2015, I can activate that, and then that would be our, our, our theme. I'm going to jump back here to this particular theme that, uh, that we were looking at, and I'm going to uh, activate it. We'll get her back, back on the right uh, uh, location here. So I'm going to go back to my uh, Chrome. I'm going to reload this again. And here we are. So I, I kind of showed you how you go around and shop for themes. Uh, we can go to that theme forest site real quick. So this is, the, this is that marketplace. So if I go to WordPress and I go to, uh, let's say, e-commerce themes, they'll just show me tons of options. And what I want to show you on this, just as a, just because they're in there doesn't mean anybody's making any money on them or they're a good theme. It just means they're trying to monetize them. So what I always look for when we're looking for a theme is I like to see someone who is a top seller. Some people can make a phenomenal amount of money selling WordPress themes, you maybe $50 a piece, and they're up in the many, many thousands just for one theme. So when you're in here, uh, let's just look at WordPress, and we're going to sort by uh, best sellers. And we'll just click on this first one that popped up. Okay, so this guy is a power elite author. You might look for something like that. Uh, you can look at the other things that they've done in the portfolio. This person sold 416,000, uh, looks like $60 bills. It's a pretty, pretty lucrative uh, business to be in. So, uh, so it doesn't look like they're going to go out of business. So I just want to show you when you're, you're picking these things, just because they're in the theme forest does not mean that they have the wherewithal to keep going. So look for somebody who has lots of sales. And just that's just my uh, my tip. And then you can also look for live previews. And so the reason I like to shop for themes here is that they're populated with content. That 2010 theme that we loaded up, it's hard to visualize what that could possibly look like. But these people will have a lot more content and, and, and be more appealing. So I'm going to... Uh, I think that's what we're going to talk about for the theme installation. And then the next thing we're going to talk about is uploading some media to your, your WordPress site. So I'm in WordCamp 5. So we're back to this particular theme. And the way I like to get organized is that sometimes you're, uh, you don't know exactly what you're going to write or you're not sure what your blog's going to be populated with, but you can start gathering assets for that blog as you're, as you're thinking about it. This is a good image I found. This is a photograph that I've taken. And so what I do is I just set up some folders and it's going to be called uh, images. And uh, last night I uh, poked around and, and found some images uh, just using a Google image search around Kansas City. And so that's kind of the content that we're going to use for this post today. So the way you do this, I'm going to do one at a time, and what I want you to know is that sometimes you find images around the web and they're just a series of numbers and letters, or if you take pictures on your phone or your desktop, it might be image one, image two, image three, or, or a snapshot with a date and time. Try to name these something that's descriptive, because a lot of times if you're blogging, you'll, you won't, people may not, they're not going to find your blog post, but they may find an image in Google image search that you've named uh, properly, and it probably would help, you know, overall just for SEO purposes, and then later on, if you're trying to organize things, you know, it's just kind of tough when you just have a bunch of numbers uh, sitting in a pile uh, of, of assets. So I'm going to show. I'm just going to show you uh, just one of these. We'll do this uh, uh, Western Auto Building. So we're going to upload the Western Auto Building. So this gets uploaded, and this becomes part of my, my media uploading. We're going to talk about the different types of media that you could upload. So I'm going to click on this. It's in my library now. I'm going to click on that, and this is the image. And so it gives me a, a URL. So if I actually type, you know, copy that, I'm going to post that, paste that into a different browser. This is behind a little bit of a firewall for this demo. I'm going to paste it into this browser, which I've already got permission to, to load things. So 
but this is going to load. But what I wanted to show you is that you can do like a little bit of a, a digital asset management. So let's say you don't have your blog written, but you've taken some pictures of your grandkids or your, you know, the high school football game. You can actually just upload them to WordPress. You don't have to make a page or a post or anything. And all these URLs, you can reach those assets uh, directly just by sharing those. And so it's just a, you, know, you don't have to, you can use WordPress and you don't have to write articles. You can just use it as your own private image library if you wanted to. So this is a, uh, a picture of the, the Western Auto Building in uh, Kansas City, and I've uploaded that asset to my media library, and now I can reach that, and I could share this asset if I wanted to with this URL uh, with you know whoever I wanted to. If I had, was doing something for a client, I wanted to show them uh, a picture of some project that I'm working on. It doesn't have to be listed on your website as part of an article or a post. It's already in your media library. So that's uh, that's, so that, that's that. So, so there's a little bit of information on here when you upload an asset to tell you about it. It gives me the dimensions, 1983,020. This is a really big file. I think this is maybe the Wikipedia file for, for the Western Auto Building. Uh, it tells you what kind of asset it is. It's a JPEG. It gives you a URL. It has a title on it. You can write a caption, an alt text, and a description. So every piece of uh, media that you upload, you can actually tag it with some information. And the better the description, the more likely it's going to be found somewhere uh, in through search engines. So just make sure, just don't upload it up there. You, you've named the image something that's a, a descriptive image, and then you can actually give it a uh, the alt text. So when I roll over that image for browsers that enable that, that's the text that's going to pop up. And then you can also give it a description, and then sometimes people that are, uh, used to, you do Google image search, it'll show the description. So we're just going to do something really quick here. Okay, so those are, those are the descriptions we put on this particular asset. And another thing I want to show you real quick is that uh, this is kind of a poor man's Photoshop if you, if you want to use it for that purpose, but I can edit this image. So let's say you don't have any image editing software inside of WordPress. I could uh, rotate this, I could crop it, I could reduce the size, I could scale it down. So I'm going to actually just make this uh, 2,000. Uh, Instead of that larger image, I'm going to scale it down. Actually, that's, that's larger. So I'm going to make it 1,200. And so it'll scale it down to that particular size. So sometimes you upload some photos and they're huge. You can actually use this to do a little bit of photo manipulation. So I'm going to save that. And uh, we're just going to close this out. So the next thing we're going to do is, remember I showed you that assets folder we had? We're going to upload everything else to this. We're just going to upload them again, and I'll drag all these over here, and I'm going to drop those files and upload. So what I could have been doing when I put my blog together, I don't know what I'm going to write, but I do know some great images that I've taken over the years and whatever you know, project, just start saving them, and then you can upload them to your WordPress and do some stuff in the background if you want to. So this is going to take a little while to do. Uh, so the next thing I want to do is that you can upload all kinds of assets. I could upload a recording to this website if I wanted to. I could upload a video to the website. I could upload PDFs. And so what I've done is I made some PDFs of these images um, that we have here. And I'm going to upload those. So again, uh, I'm just going to show you, you know, we uploaded all this stuff, it's part of our library now. Again, it's giving us uh, those things that I would fill in, and this just might be some sort of blurb or some sort of graphic. I found this last night when I was grabbing some assets. Um, so the, uh, so the, the plugins, um, or the themes are the PDFs I made here. I just made two PDFs, and I can also upload PDFs to my media file. So I've got my two PDFs that I have in there. And similarly, you can give somebody this URL on this PDF. So it's not on your Dropbox. It's not, you know, some, it's not in your Google Cloud account. It's just sitting in your WordPress media library. So when these things get up, this plot twist PDF, it has a URL. And so I grab that, and I'm going to go over here to my Chrome, and open up another tab, paste that in there. And now I've used my WordPress installation as a little bit of a file management system, and I've got a PDF that's going to load uh, into this particular system. So I think we've talked about the theme selection and installation, and we did some media uploading. So now we've got uh, enough stuff to uh, uh, write an article if we want to, but I want to install a couple of plugins first before I write that, that particular article.
So, uh, I don't know if you guys have installed any plugins, but the way WordPress works is that, that uh, plugins add extra functionality. The core WordPress is a free program, but there are people all over the world, literally tens of thousands, if not more, writing little enhancements and tweaks to WordPress. And the way you add those to your site is that um, you go to the plugins tab, and I'm just going to click on uh, install plugins to see what the default is, because that's kind of what we're looking at right now. So as a default, uh, this, uh, this plugin comes standard with every WordPress. If you have a, an account with Automatic, uh, if you don't have an account with Automatic, you probably want to get one because they'll give you a little ID number, and this is a spam reduction uh, tool that, uh, that comes standard. But when people post things to your blog, this kind of detects that it might be spammy. So that's a default thing. But we're going to actually look for a couple of plugins uh, to add to this, to this website. And uh, one of them here is, is uh, this is thing I'm going to show you. It's advanced, advanced image styles. I'm going to look for that. But first, I'm going to pause on this particular page. Uh, similar to how we shop for themes inside of the WordPress shell, you can also shop for plugins. So you're still inside of your website. Uh, and these are the plugins that, that are available, and there are literally thousands and thousands of them. So let's say you want to type in a search engine. Uh, let me see, uh, SEO, we'll just type that in there. And it'll give you a list of SEO plugins that type that pop up here. And if you look for, um, I don't know, metadata, let's see what happens. Uh, So it gives you some, some different things there. So we're going to look at uh, images. And it'll give us some things that help us manage uh, photo galleries and things like that. So you, you, you could spend hours you know, going through all of these things. We're just going to click on some of these just to show you Smush is the, is the name of this one. So I'm just going to give you some tips for installing plugins. Similarly to the, to the themes, these things are free. You can install something that will work or not work. And, and so this is the box that people have uh, when you get to get some details about that particular plugin you're thinking of using. And again, I look for people that have active installations. It looks like people are using this. They've updated it recently because even though it's described as something that may work perfectly, I always look for something that's been installed by tons of people. If, if you're going to, you know, it's always fun to experiment with stuff and, uh, and be the first person to try. But if it's having to do with your business or if you're going to be afraid you're going to lose uh, some time uh, fixing things, you might not want to do it. So uh, you can also look at the reviews for these things. And um, let's see. So I can install this now. I'm not actually going to install it. Uh, I like to read the reviews. I like to look at the screen snapshots, uh, the FAQs, those type of things. And, uh, and it just kind of gives you an idea. It's just like shopping and just figuring out what this looks like, if it's legit or not. But this one looks like a very popular active installations, one million. That's a monster amount of, uh, of installations. Uh, you know, I would be comfortable if somebody had like 10, 20, 30,000 installations for what seems like a common uh, plug-in. And if it's really an esoteric thing, if you just see a few hundred or a few thousand, it'd be fine. Uh, so I just want to show you that. So we're actually looking for this thing called Advanced Image Styles. And I'm going to look for that. And I'm just going to install this in here. Um, so I'm going to install now. So it's installed in my system, but it's not activated. We're going to activate it in a second here. Uh, then the next thing we're going to look for is uh, Tiny MCE. Tiny MCE Advanced. I'll tell you what these are in a second. I just want to show you. So I'm thinking about doing this. I can see from this screen that uh, there's more details, but I got 1 million plus active installations. I'm going to install it now, but I'm not going to activate it. So now, before we just had the, uh, the single uh, plug-in, and I'm going to click here. Now I've got three things. And so if you want to see uh, what, you know, what the plugins are installed on your WordPress blog, this is where you would go. You could see them uh, active or inactive. And then after you install these, every once in a while you'll log into your admin, admin panel and there will be some updates. That, the, that this particular plugin manufacturer or the software developer has released an update and they'll update automatically. So I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to click right here. And my bulk action could be to update all of these 
these at once. Okay, you probably want to make sure you ba your backups are working, you backed everything up because this is a point in your development where things could go wrong. I, I say that WordPress works amazing. I mean, we use it for all our companies. Uh, almost all projects involve some sort of WordPress website that we may customize or or you know do database development on the back end to enhance it. So rarely does anything go wrong. So when I say it's not like you know this is not a precarious application that you're using 99.9% .9 of the time everything works great but I would always back up my stuff before I did a, a bulk uh, update but if you install daily backups it's not a big deal you're only going to lose a day's worth of work if something goes wrong um, you could also delete things uh, if, if you wanted to, to remove those things as well. So I just wanted to show you that that's how you, uh, you, know, you can check all of those things off. So we've got two things uh, installed but we actually haven't done anything, uh, we haven't activated those, and before I activate those, um, I wanted to, to, to um, we're going to create a page and a post. So I want to tell you the difference. Does anybody you know, I'll tell you the difference between pages and posts? Database-wise, they're virtually exactly the same thing. It's just a, a document that you're adding, uh, a record you're adding to the WordPress database that is going to be either called a page or a post. Uh, Maybe the differentiation between the two is a page is something that is going to be there longer. So if I'm going to say I'm a travel blogger and I have a an article about myself and my travel business company and uh, those things will be pages. But if it's my trip to China and my trip to Los Angeles and my trip to you know uh, Greenland, those are all posts. It's more so your like the the things if you look at a magazine that the, the front page is the, the cover of the magazine, but inside that cover it's about the authors, it's about the publication itself. Those are pages, but all of those articles that would change on a monthly pace, basis, those are more posts. So you can decide and you can actually uh, create either one, uh, but but um, that's that's the, technically the difference. Now some themes come automatically that they will, this particular pa page or, or aggregation is showing everything that's a post or everything that's a page. And so you might want to, if you, all your articles are written as, as posts and you want to make some pages, you can actually do that. You can just toggle them back and forth between those two possibilities. So I just want to tell you the difference between pages and posts. So um, right now we're going to look at all the posts that we have in here. This is a default install. We just got one. WordPress installations come with one article or, po or uh, post install is called Hello World. And so you can uh, you know, test at that and that, that's what shows up. So if we look at this particular uh, thing that we're on, this particular site, this is it. I come down here, this is the default post for that particular thing. And so what I like to do is, uh, just as a, as a tip for development, is I like to use this as a scratch pad. So I actually uh, say add new, and I put a post in here, and I just call it scratch pad. My scratch pad, I can have scratch pad one, two, three, four, five, whatever I want to do. And then I just save that as a draft. I never publish my scratch pad, but I, I find it workflow-wise, I can get some of my content set inside of the WordPress installation. So it's not really an article that I've written that I'm ready to publish. I just create something called a scratch pad, and I can put notes in here and, and play around with things. Uh, so I made some, uh, I grabbed some content uh, from some places. Let me see if I can get that. Let me grab this. And uh, I just grabbed some content that we're going to use to create some articles today about the city. And I'm going to copy all that right now. And I'm just going to throw it into my scratch pad. Okay? So now it's not really an article, it's just my notes, but I'm saving them inside of my WordPress. If I ever want to go to that URL and I can save the draft. You could actually give this uh, your, your own login. Uh, let, me, let me click here to edit the visibility. Connection is really slow, so I apologize. But to the screen through is that I can password protect this. So uh, you know, it's it's published. I can look at it at the office, even though I'm not logged in. I want to see what my notes are, so I can publish this, and I can just make it private password protected. So it's technically it's on the internet, but only I know the password. And then when I want to go to this URL and see what my notes are for something, it's my own private content uh, out of, out in the uh, on the internet. So I thought I'd show you that. Uh, so I'm just going to save this as a draft, 
And so now I've created the scratch pad. So remember those two plugins that we, uh, we, we installed with the advanced image styles and the tiny MCE? Uh, I'm going to see this dialog box here. This is, you know, the poor man's, uh, you know, Microsoft Word in here. This is how I edit this stuff. So I see I've got Western Auto Building. I want to select that and I'm going to make it bold. These are the tools that come standard with a default installation of WordPress. And you can do a lot of stuff there, but there's a plugin that I like to use and it's called Tiny MCE Advanced. And it provides a different set of tools that you can customize. So that's one of the plugins that we just installed. Okay. So I'm going to go to my plugins and see which ones uh, are installed. And I haven't asked him to leave this page. I haven't uh, uh, activated it yet. So, so now I'm going to activate this tiny MCE. So it was installed. We did that. And I'm going to activate this. And it's going to activate it. And it's also going to give me a settings. So some, some plugins actually give you... Um, the settings there. So now I see settings instead of activate. Some of them actually create other menus in your system. So let's say I were to have installed a different type of plugin. So I can go to the settings from this page, but you'll notice now I've got something down here called Tiny MCE Advanced, and that's where I would go to configure that. And, and so it, there's not always a default place. I know it's kind of confusing sometimes for me. I install a new plugin. Sometimes they'll add their own menu item up here and it'll have its own separate thing in the menu bar. Other times, they tuck it inside of tools. Other times, they tuck it inside of settings. So if you install something, you might actually have to look through this entire menu to see where it's at, uh, if it's actually going to be a new header or if it's going to be a subcategory under tools or settings. I just thought that I'd tell you that because I always end up poking around in here. So we're going to click on settings and we're going to reconfigure the tools that we have available to us when we want to write a, uh, a blog post. So these are the other options that are in there. And, uh, and so I, I'm just going to look at these and let's just say I want to put an underline. That seems like a pretty common thing that you might want to have inside of your tools when you're editing stuff. So I'm going to drag the underline thing up there to that toolbar. And uh, let me see what else I might want to add. Uh, I'm going to put, I don't use emoticons, but I'm going to put it up here and we'll see what it looks like. And we want to write something, drop emoticons in there. So now what I've done is I've modified this uh, particular uh, uh, list of tools that are going to be available, me, available to me when I write a blog post or a, uh, uh, a blog page. So I save my changes. And so now we're going to go back to our scrapbook, I believe. I can't remember if we did a page or post. A little fancy. It's a sample page. All posts. So this is our scratch pad. So I'm going to click on edit. I should probably just show you this while we're here. Is that um, this is going to keep track of all your articles over time. And if you're actually you know blogging a bunch, you just use this as a little bit of a dashboard to see what you've got. You've got the author. You've got the categories that we haven't talked about that you want to apply to something. And we're going to have the tags. Uh, that you would actually apply to an article and it tells you when it's last modified and you can all of these things are sortable so if you want to you know, so, so you can you know, look at uh, the content this is obviously uh, you're not needing that because there's only one or two here so I'm going to click on edit okay and so what's going to happen now is we're going to see those revised menu from the tiny MC plugin that we did so now I've got uh, my underlying thing that I put in here. I've got my emoticons that I've added there. So you can modify this as you work to show whatever tools you want to, to put in there. So the next thing I'm going to show you is we're going to add some media to this you know, dummy article that we put together. And so let's just add a picture of this 1920s uh, Kansas City City Market right here. So I'm going to say, this is the same paragraph repeated over and over again, by the way. So I put my cursor right here in my, uh, in my page, and I'm going to click on the Add Media. And remember, the, uh, uh, you can use this to actually add new things, but we're going to click on this tab right here that says Media Library, and this shows us all the stuff that we added before. So I've created a page, I've added some text to that page, I've modified my menu, my tools available to me, and we're going to add something in here. And I think this picture is the 1927 City Market. Okay. So let me see. City Market History. And I'm going to say it's a 1927 City Market. Okay. So I'm going to insert this into the post. But before I do that, 
what happens when you upload one of those images to WordPress is it takes, let's say, let's say it was a 1,000 by 1,000 pixel image. And just to, in case you're not familiar, a pixel, 72 pixels equals an inch, uh, or so, so approximately. So if you, uh, I think that's how it translates, um, and so you can see what these sizes are. So each theme comes with certain default things. So if I upload a picture that is a certain size, by default, it's going to make it into a couple of other sizes, just to make it into smaller ones. And so instead of, instead of you having a page, let's say I uploaded a whole bunch of really big images, but on my blog, po or my blog, they're only going to be tiny little like thumbnails. Well, I don't want to have to force the user to upload all those huge images when I'm only going to show them thumbnails. So what we're going to do is we're going to insert this in here into the full size is this size, and that's whatever I uploaded. But they're going to make some common elements there. So we're going to put this in at 300 by 240, or I could put a thumbnail in. So I'm going to put that in there, and I'm going to insert that into the post. Okay? So I've inserted this into the post, and I don't, uh, and so that's what it looks like. But you can see the text is not wrapping around. I'm not really happy with how that looks. So what I can do is when I click on an image that I've inserted in here, it gives me this little toolbox, and I can click on here and edit that particular thing. So I can align it center, I can link it to things, I have some advanced options, uh, I can say it's uh, centered right, left, none, I can edit the original image, so I'm gonna, I can update that, I'm not going to do anything. But remember that other plugin that we installed, the Advanced Image Styles plugin? I'm going to go back to my plugins, and I'm going to activate that. First, I'm going to save this before I get out of here. So now I've inserted this image. So I'm going back to my plugins. Okay, so now we're going to activate this advanced image styles. Okay, so that's activated. We're going to go back to our page, or to our post. And so we're going to go back to our scratch pad where we're editing this stuff. Now we've got an article down here that we're putting together, just cobbling it together. Okay. 1927, 1920s. Okay. So now when I click on this image, I've got my advanced image styles, and I click on here, and you'll see that I've got this padding down here. So now what I want to do is I'm going to put 10 pixels around all of it. And I want to link to none. And if it's uh, left, say update. So now you see what's happened is I drop my image in, and it's given me some space around there, and it's wrapped the text around the thing. So I, I just I don't know why they took this out of WordPress, but it's almost I install it on almost every site that I have because it used to have something that was built in. So every once in a while they may take WordPress from one version to the next, and you may lose something that you really relied upon uh, before. So I'm going to change these to 20 pixels around because I wasn't happy with the spacing around there. And so now that's what it looks like. So we made blog post, inserted an image. Uh, drop it in there, put a border around it, and now I'm going to click uh, Save. And so now we've got some content that we can use to put in a, uh, a post that we're going to make. So uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to try to customize this site a little bit with some menus and some other items. So a lot of times when you install a theme into the system, we're going to look and see how many posts we have right now and how many pages. So we'll look at those pages. I think I should, have, I should have logged in on my phone. I think my phone's internet access is faster with all you guys who are probably online at the same time, too. 
So we've got just this one sample page in here, and we have the post that we know that we created before. So I'm going to jump down here to Appearance. Remember, we installed that theme, and we, we put this default one in here. So I'm going to go to my themes. This is what we're reading right down here. Okay, so we're back at the themes, okay? So what, this is my active theme, uh, and I'm going to click Customize, okay? So when, when the later versions of WordPress come with some like a little bit of previewing tools, and, uh, and so we're going to actually modify this site to add some of the content that we've uploaded here. Okay, so I'm going to click on Customize, and hopefully it'll load faster. So just by the way, this particular installation I have, it calls every new website, Brett Burry blog that comes in here. So these are my options available on this particular theme for customizing this 2017. So I have some site identity here. My site title I can put in here, and we'll call this... AC. Okay, so that's our site title. Then I can put my tagline in here. And we'll just change this a little bit to show you how this works. Your super powered WP. Um, okay, so I'm going to uh, save this, and you see that those things changed in my, my preview, so I can see what they look like. You make them longer, shorter, or whatever. I can check and see what this looks like on a, on a tablet if I wanted to. I can check and see what this looks like on a, uh, a phone if I wanted to, so I can see my things just by playing around down there before I publish it. So it's actually a pretty, pretty good tool. Um, and know, everybody should know that most people are going to look at almost every site on their phone now, so this actually may be the most important look of your site. It may look spectacular on your desktop, but realize that the people who are looking at it are going to see this. Uh, and so I'm going to click uh, uh, Publish. And so now if I go over to my demo over here, so we've got our title that's on the live site now. We just changed that inside of the uh, inside of this thing. So next thing I want to do is my customization menu and yeah. I, I, I just published. Published is, is, is synonymous with save on this thing. Yeah. And uh, that's how I like to kind of preview the stuff because, you know, on here, because this I didn't actually have to go over there. I was just showing you for purposes of that's what it's going to look like. This is a really good preview window that they have on, on you know, over here. So um, so that, let's look at the colors that we're going to have. We're just going to use, you can, you know, different themes have different things. We're just going to keep what we have, but I could actually go in here and select whatever hexadecimal equivalent I wanted to or use this palette to select something different if I wanted to make my background color. See, it's changing the, the colors on those words. Uh, and like I say, this is this is really subjective to this theme, but it's analogous to lots of things that you find in different themes. So I'm going to go back, and we're not going to change the colors. Uh, I hope not. Maybe I just uh, so we're just going to put light here and put light again. Um, publish that. We should jump back to where we were. So let me go here, and we're going to go to. I just wanted to get us back on the right, uh, right path here. Um, okay, so then I have header media. Right now, this, this particular thing shows up on tons of websites. So we can add a new image to our background right now using this, this system. Uh, there's going to be some default sizes or recommended sizes for this image. Honestly, I don't recall what they are at the top of my head. But we're going to add a new image, and we're going to replace that uh, uh, cactus, I think, or that plant with something else. So I click on Add a New Image. 
and I come to my media library, so I can add something brand new to put on our, our blog post. So I grabbed, uh, let me see what I grabbed. I thought this might be a good thing for our Kansas City uh, blog. We'll see what it looks like. So I'm going to select that and uh, just put it in there. And we'll just try it right here. Now this is our, I haven't published yet, we'll just see what this looks like. Is that looking? That's not bad. So we'll publish this. So we took a theme and we're going through the steps to modify that theme to customize it. I'm going to reload this. And now this is our our background for our WordCamp blog that we're putting blog post for new. That actually doesn't look that bad. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so um, so that's that's how you do the header media. You can actually, you know, you go to those websites where they have video that's rolling. You can buy some video on, online that kind of loops, or or and that could be an animated GIF if you wanted to. You can do lots of stuff. It does tell you the sizes of the video: 2,000 by 1,200 pixels. In ASM, like a, a good a website, you're kind of having you know the same thing loop through. Well, this is where you would add it to have that header video. So the next thing we're going to do is we said we we're going to create some menus. Uh, that was one of our, our steps here. So uh, I can I have a top menu and I've got a social links menu. So let me look and see what's in my top menu right now. So if I go to my blog, I've got home, about, blog, and contact in there. So when I configure my website, it'll give me some other options that I can add uh, content. You'll also notice that before we only had that one post in there, that hello. When I, my first publish step on this particular theme added a bunch of default posts into the system to kind of guide me along and how to configure this. So before we just had one page, it was hello world. Now by clicking that one button, they've added this post, a uh, sample, a homepage section, and they've added an about article and they've added a blog article, which is the one we had before, and they've added a contact article. So they kind of do a, lot, you know, a big favor. It's like almost all sites have an about and a contact and, and those things. So they've kind of configured this home page automatically to do a lot of work for you. So we can add different images and different content to that particular thing. But right now we're just going to show you how to do a, a menu. So uh, I can add menu items to this if I wanted to. I could say a home page section, blog, contact. I could add a new page that I'm going to create. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to take out my uh, about page. I'm just going to uh, see what I'm going to do here. We'll add something. Yeah, that's that kind. Okay, it's a page. I'm going to publish this. So I've added scratch pad. There it is. I didn't add it. It's not. I just put it in there as a placeholder. There should be a page called scratch pad in there now. But not the one we created, but the one I just named. So you can modify that. I can take out some of those things. So we created a new menu here. And see this little social media menu at the bottom here? I can add things to that as well if I want to. So uh, I'm trying to figure out what we want to do next. We set up some, we're going to set up a widget. That's something else that's very common, is that when you customize uh, your WordPress themes, there's a, a functionality that, uh, you know how you add plugins to systems? Well, widgets are kind of like that because they enhance things and there are certain areas of themes like a footer or a header or a sidebar. Those are all places where you drop in new widgets to, to help customize things. So we're going to add some widgets to this particular theme. Let's take a look and see what we've got right now. Right here is a place where these are widgets. There's an archive, categories, metadata, login. We're going to change that a little bit. So I'm going to click right here, and I'm going to go to widgets. Okay. So I have two, I have a blog sidebar, I have a footer, and I have a footer footer two here. So each theme comes with different widget areas. You could have a theme that would have multiple widget areas at the top or the bottom or the side. It's just whatever the developer does. These are pretty common. So your main page of your your blog looks like looks like this. But when I actually go to an article, you'll see that my article content is going to be there. But on the side of that uh, is going to be a place for me to, to customize some widgets.
So I'm going to show you what this looks like. We're going to put some new sidebar widgets on here. So we've got text, find us, search, and about this site. But we're going to click add a widget. And these are things that come as defaults. There's audio, cop, uh, uh, categories, custom HTML, gallery, images, metadata. And as you add different plugins, they may give you different available widgets that appear in this thing. So we're going to put something in here and we're just going to put a, a tag cloud, okay? Just to have something in there. And so the tag cloud is going to be um, just our tags that we put on things. And we're going to show the tag counts on that, that particular thing. And then we'll click add a widget. Another one. And we're just going to put this in here powered by, uh, let me see here. We can drop an image in here too. We'll do that real quick. You know, we have our image library. We're going to add an image widget on here. And we're going to put plot twist in there. But we're just going to put plot twist in as a thumbnail. So we're going to add that to the widget. So I'm going to publish this. Let's see what this looks like. I'm not sure why things aren't loaded up in there. I'll figure out. I think I don't know if it's the connection or what's going on, but we added some widgets to the uh, to the system. So the next thing is uh, we wanted to talk about uh, just briefly our your taxonomy on your articles. So most of the ways that, that people are going to find you is um, you know, you're going to have blog articles or pages that have certain topics. Well, WordPress comes in with a certain taxonomy on all those pages and uh, posts. So let's go to our pages here. We'll look at all the pages we have in our system. And, excuse me, oh, the time, we have 9.56. Um, let me do this one thing quick and then I'll take some questions. Thank you. Uh, let me go to edit this. And so the content that you put on your blog is gonna have uh, some tags and some uh, categories on it. And so we're running out of time here, but what I want to tell you is that um, the, the, the distinction that you need to make is that anytime you put a category in there, somebody's going to be able to click on that category and find all of the pages or posts that you've put under that particular category. So let's just say this is Kansas City, and you might have uh, the uh, Crossroads and the River Market and the Plaza as your three categories, okay? But you, within those categories, you could have a, a tag that's called Restaurants and a tag that's called Shops and a tag that's called uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 streets or something. So if I want to click on streets of Kansas City, it would cross across all of my three uh, river market, crossroads, and plaza categories. Or if I want to click on restaurants, I would find all the restaurants. So it's just two different ways for you to pluck your content out of the uh, out of the articles that you've written. So I think we're running. We got three minutes left, and I don't know how long before the next session starts. Ten. So does anybody have any uh, questions? Yes. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Thanks. Uh, go ahead. Uh, add keywords to the image, media and image library. Uh, right here where it says alt text. Uh, the alt text and the description, you could add those keywords in there if you wanted to. And you can separate them by commas. You could write a full sentence in there if you wanted to. Uh, to uh, so I've done plug. I didn't realize. I thought that was a timekeeper, not the uh, <laughs> the next speaker. Uh, so that's where you would add them on that Im image library. Any other questions? Yep, excuse me. Oh, yeah. I'll be in the back of the room if you have any questions. Thank you very much. Uh,